Hello and welcome to today's program. I'm Jonathan Clyde, your host. I'm the owner and founder of the Clyde Design Group Fine Custom Cabinetry in Oakland, California. Additionally, I have a background in classical music as a conductor of orchestras around the world, as well as being an active real estate agent. Today's program is going to be fascinating because it does deal with California's climate change plan. And this is going to be fascinating because my guest today is Mr. Michael Killen, the esteemed artist, also founder and president of Killen Associates, uh, developing business strategies for companies around the world, host of the Killen Report, and also the visiting host of the radio station KZSU at Stanford University. You do a lot of stuff, Michael. You are terrific. Thank, Thank you for coming. You. Thank you. Thank it, you, John, for it, having me here. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. You know, before we speak um, about your art and how it relates to the California plan, energy plan, i just like to sort of go over the genesis of that plan so people have a better idea so they'll know where you're coming from. The plan itself actually was uh, introduced and adopted in 2006 by the legislature known as the California Global Warming Solutions Act. And basically what it does in a nutshell is that from 2006 to 2020 coming up, it is mandating that the state reduce its emissions, its carbon emissions, by 30 percent to the levels that they were in 1990. Yes. And I'm fascinated because I understand, Michael, that you're developing a new painting and essentially painting the plan. So what's the painting called? What's, what, what are you doing? Well, first of all, it's not going to be one painting. It's going to be a series of paintings. And for this series, I am including a few paintings I have made already. For example, I have made Resilience of America 24 feet. I have made Sustainability 24 feet. And a few other paintings. They will be part of the series. Now, the new paintings I am making I look at the different elements, the different components, the different tactics of the plan, and I will be painting maybe four or five of them, and then I will make one painting that is about the most important qualities I believe are in the plan. Great. The plan, as far as I understand, touches on eight areas, in essence. And I actually wrote them down. So I just want to go over them with you, and then we can talk about uh, the new painting coming out uh, that specifically addresses this. We've got eight subject matter. We've got cap and trade. We've got electricity and energy. We've got high global warming potential gases. We've got then the fields of agriculture, transportation, industry, forestry, and waste and recycling. So is your new painting that you're going to do that is going to be included with the others that you've already done, is it going to be touching on all eight, or is there one that's more significant within those eight that's, that you're thinking of? What, do you, what are your thoughts from a creative process on this? Well, first, um, it will, first of all, that list the state gave you and you just uh, gave me really consist of targets, mm -hmm. certain industry sectors that the state has determined it wants them to reduce their emissions. And the other roughly half of that list are what I call strategies. And it's how the state wants us to reduce greenhouse emissions across those targeted areas. I'm looking at, for example, cap and trade. Cap and trade is a development, a function, a process that's very, very difficult for most people to understand and appreciate. I will make a painting on cap and trade to help 
decision makers all over the pay place, policy makers, deepen their understanding of it because they might, might want to implement that same kind of approach. Maybe these folks come from India or maybe they come from Texas. So I'm making a painting, for example, on cap and trade to help decision makers and voters appreciate and support uh, California's plan. That's great. I know that there's a big um, global climate uh, action summit that's going to be in September. I think, the, I think it's between the 12th and 15th of 2018. Yeah. Are there plans to have your art included within the summit? Uh, the state and I have not spoken yet. Um, but I'm painting the plan and I remember talking to my wife the other day and I joked with her and I said, you know, I'm worried about the competition. <laughs> my <laughs> wife chuckled. Uh, I don't think I'll have any competition. It's, it's, it's uh, n not something a lot of people want to try to do, paint the plan. The reason I'm uh, somewhat optimistic has something to do with uh, the real decision makers in the state of California really, really want to share their plan with decision makers worldwide because the, it is uh, probably the most thought out, thorough, pragmatic plan for helping states, cities, countries um, decrease greenhouse gas emissions while at the same time helping these different cities, states, countries increase their economy, increase jobs, mm -hmm. improve health, and do many, many other things. Now, the reason I'm a little optimistic that my, my art will wind up at the event has something to do with, I have a history with the state. Three of my major pieces are in the governor's office of planning and research. Mm. And that organization is is really a powerhouse in, in helping the direction education of the state's plan. And the other thing is a few years ago, Jerry Brown's assistant, Nancy McFadden, called me and asked me to put my huge painting, Resilience of America, and my huge painting, Sustainability, on the governor's wall. What made you want to create this kind of depiction of the plan? Well, I had just finished uh, making a painting that interpreted Secretary George Schultz's climate change energy plan for the GOP. It was a 15 foot, 6 foot high painting and I thought that was a great challenge and a good, good thing for me to do for the country, you know, give a depiction, a symbolic view of what George Schultz thinks the GOP should use and to help the Republican Party and the conservatives, you know, get into the real world of, of, of trying to do something important like reduce the threat of the gases. Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, California's climate change plan is the most important thing I can work on. And I believe it is the most important climate change plan on this planet. Well, I think because we're such a large state and with an economy that's enormous, uh, that certainly we have, we're a major player in that. I'm assuming that the conversation and the thought process of uh, Secretary Schultz happened before the current administration. I'm quite sure Secretary Schultz believed that Hillary Clinton would be the best person to become the President of the United States. He planned to give the plan to her. He was shocked. And he said to me, Michael, why would I give the plan to Trump? He doesn't get it. He doesn't believe in climate change. He wouldn't even look at it. So from an artistic perspective, the plan itself is so huge and far-ranging. How can any one person really capture all of this? Well, it's a big plan, and I'm taking two approaches with respect to what I am painting. 
the most important painting I will make will be the painting that I believe is the most important quality of the plan so that when decision makers, voters come to the big event in San Francisco in next year, I want to try to be sure that they go home recognizing what, in particular, what special thing the state of California did. I'm not going to talk about it, but except by saying this, if we look around the state of California, you will see that the legislators came out with this plan and it's evolved over time. And it's one thing for the state of California to say to everyone in the state, I want you to get behind this, every city, every township, every county. And it's another thing for all those counties and governments to get behind it. Every town, every city, every county in the state, as well as the industries that are in the so-called target area, they are all behind it. And so I am going to paint that element of the strategy that motivated every county, town, and city in this state to support the state's plan. That's great. And you've come to this plan over a period of time. What was the initial impetus that drew you to the plan and the importance of the plan? Well, I started focusing on interpreting climate change and the nation's energy and the impact of these greenhouse gases about 10 years ago. And I was approached, I started to make a couple of the paintings, but I didn't really get into it. And then uh, the late Steve Schneider, mm -hmm. uh, one of the world's great climatologists and early thinkers, and one who I think uh, advised maybe three presidents on the threat of climate change. He came to me and asked me if I would really step up my efforts of interpreting climate change to help him and his colleagues educate the public. And I made a couple of paintings. And you know, I was about to sit back and do something else. And all of a sudden, NASA came along and said they wanted me to make a, a huge painting for them to bring attention to their new building, which was that was going to was being built called sustainability base. And so I agreed, and I made a 24-foot painting for NASA. And you know they liked it, other people liked it, and all of a sudden other organizations like uh, the United States Department of Commerce, the United States Geological Survey, NASA, you know they all came along inviting me to put my art in their buildings. And I see the importance of uh, helping the state educate everyone of the need for all of us to step forward and contribute to slowing the growth of climate change and possibly down the road even removing some of the emissions up in the air. So from an artistic perspective, when the viewing public is looking at these works, and I know that there are some still yet to come, from your point of view as an artist, what is the most important takeaway that for you'd them. like to, for them? Well, first of all, I want them to come to the painting. I want them to look at it. I want them to struggle a little bit to try to interpret what they are looking. Because I tend to believe when the mind struggles a little bit thinking about it, the mind grows and things go in there and maybe can be used again and okay. Also to look at the painting and I want to take their eye and mind and move it around the painting and as it, their minds and eyes move around they are learning and they are valuing and remembering the imagery that they they're looking at. Mm -hmm. And are there any special or different techniques, let's put it that way, from a, from a painting point of view that you would use for this particular subject matter versus sure. um, general language on something else? All right, let's face it. This is a huge project. And, and really, maybe 10 people should be working on it, really. Um, 
what I am doing right now, I am in investing a considerable amount of time to master software that can be used to make art. I'm yeah. actually spending more time learning how to use the electronics, the electrons, the software, so that I can look at a 15-foot painting canvas and with a click of a few fingers, the background could be decided upon. And I could draw one image, another image, another image, and a couple little keyboard strokes and have those pieces, those images, and then move them around and improve them. So does that actually, uh, I'm just curious about the technology, does that actually put them on the canvas or it allows you to see the canvas before you begin painting? Or Good how point. Does that Good point. To see them before I put them on the canvas. And I also want to share something about this kind of painting, this type of painting. It is, I think, unusual to paint ideas. Mm -hmm. Developments, yeah. But ideas and issues is is unusual and there is something else uh, I know all my friends when I say I'm going to make the the uh, paint interpret the, the state's climate plan they all say sure uh, but and I sometimes think back what pieces of knowledge are needed to even think about this project well you know when you look at the state's plan with all these different targets uh, goals, objectives, missions, and tactics. It really is necessary to have a background in strategy, organizations, because I really can look at the plan, you know, I read the page, maybe 10 pages, and I can see the elements because I come from the business world, I come from the planning world, the strategy world, and that helps me I could not do the, uh, in paint their plan uh, without this, that background. Right. Did, did the plan ever become intimidating to you as an artist? Yes, just like Stephen Sondheim and the great lyricist. Uh, you know, whenever they start writing a new song and, or people write, start a book or even putting a big business plan together, uh, it it's, can be intimidating, you know, because you, you feel the lack of knowledge and you feel the lack of, how am I going to do this? Yes, I, I think I went around for about a month trying to think about how to tackle this project. And I started to feel good when I said to myself, Michael, focus on that element which may not have been published and promoted by the state or the analyst, find that element that's, I think is most important takeaway that the viewers can take away and do some good. I'm not going to discuss it now, but I think I have found it and I, it's, I'm going to articulate it as one of, as probably the centerpiece of the program. Once I had that, the anxiety Went away. So when you take a big plan like this, uh, you find it, uh, if I'm hearing you correctly, you find it beneficial to break it down into smaller elements that perhaps are easier to deal yeah. with because yeah. the, of their size versus the whole plan at once. Uh, yes, uh, but what I always like to find is one image that could be a background image that just carries itself all the way through the painting like this image of infinity, the sustainability sign, and, and, and use an image that in the background can uh, carry it forward. But when I think about something like the California Climate Plan, I make a list of its features. Let's just call it its goals or its strategies. I make a list of them and the target areas and then I think about that item. Okay. And then I write a series of images that might be good to interpret it. Now I'm doing, the first painting, new painting I'm doing right now is uh, severe weather. And it's gonna be 15 feet 
I'm at the very early stages, and here's how I, I attack it. One, I have to have an image that people are going to walk up to the painting and say, oh, I get it, weather, severe weather. And in this particular painting, I have pe people in a boat sort of coming at us on the left. And then on the far right, the end of the painting, what I've done is I've taken the photo of that roller coaster outside of, uh, in, the, in the ocean outside of New Jersey, mm -hmm. uh, Chris Christie's Atlantic, state, yeah. and I have that. And I'm working with those two images. But then the key to really uh, doing something important, I think, is in the center, I am creating an image, somewhat of an abstract image, but people will relate to it that will be the best image I can create that when people look at it, they don't have to look at this and this, and they'll say, oh my God, that is the image for severe weather conditions. Hmm. And I'll, I'll share on how I'm going to do this. You know, if we have a weather vane, and we really stress that weather vane, and maybe two weather vanes, and maybe we have pieces of it flying around, and have it larger and more prominent than either of these two point uh, problems, then the viewer will get, you know, the obvious, you know, two examples of climate change, and then we'll get the abstract image of it. And I think they go home and they'll remember everything. And then I will feel good because I have helped the state of California educate and inform more decision makers. Which is terrific. And we're talking about the state of California's energy plan, but with regard to the global summit that's coming up in September 2018, as you mentioned before, a lot of probably international figures will be here, leaders, Canada, France, sure. uh, uh, will be here. Uh, talk about your thoughts with regard to the art and the painting and its universality beyond California. This painting could be shown in Mumbai. It could be shown in Singapore, Beijing, Kuala Lumpur, and Zurich, wherever, because it deals with uh, educating people everywhere of the need to, to support efforts to reduce carbon emissions. Because if we don't uh, do this, um, you know, we're going to spend trillions and trillions, maybe $50 trillion to rebuild infrastructure that every few months is knocked down by the water, the sun, the wind, or whatever. And it's going to kill millions of people. I mean, it's cancer. You get cancer breathing in this polluted air. And then there's starvation. I mean, it's, it's going to be... And social unrest. Do you think we have enough social unrest with Trump? And, uh, but when people are hungry, millions of people are hungry, this painting applies almost anywhere. Yes, and you had mentioned the size of the paintings, 15 feet yeah. by six feet. Uh, paintings that you have uh, that would be part of this, yeah. uh, some are 20, 24 feet. Yeah. In the, so size matters, I guess, in terms uh, of the scope of what you're trying to accomplish here. It does matter. And you know, down the road, I, no doubt the state will sit with me. And also, huge corporations are already starting to talk to me. And because at that big event, no doubt they're going to have exhibits and large organizations like PG&E, AT&T, Bank of America will have exhibits. And some of these organizations are going to say, if uh, they use my paintings at the event or otherwise sponsor my paintings, it will create an amazing opportunity for them because these paintings are about, are about one of the most important public policies on the, on the planet today. And go ahead. 
these organizations will want to be associated with a solution, which is what the California government is offering, and they want to be associated with the great state of California. How do you feel from your perspective that the community of artists is doing with regard to their creative processes in making it known that they're in it together yeah. as a community? I'm impressed by the number of artists who are making art to help um, interpret uh, developments that, that we all have to buy into and, and support. I'm very impressed with them. And yes, I'm sort of in a strange place with artists. You know, I come with this massive background in business right. and planning, and, uh, and, and yet I can paint. And, but they so accept me, and I don't feel resentment, and uh, they want to work with me and help me, and I, I like that very much. No, I, I, think, I think it's absolutely terrific, and the subject matter and the devotion that you've found mm -hmm. over all of these years uh, to do this is, um, uh, it's staggering, and it is, uh, it's just an immense project. You had mentioned before that you know you, probably 10 people could be working on this. Um, how does this affect you physically? It's just such a large well, body of work to do. Physically, well, um, it affects me by getting me to wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning and think about how am I going to do this and that. And then there is so much work talking to other people about this. You know, I'm running around interviewing you know, people like the Undersecretary of uh, Energy, former and asking them what do they think is the most important aspect of the plan and everything. It's a lot of work, but my health is holding up very nicely. That's terrific, because it, it has to, you, you've got to get this done by September. Yes. Yeah, yes. Which, is, which, which is great. Um, and, I, and I certainly hope, and I, I have a good feeling that the state's going to come through and that a lot of people are going to see these uh, wonderful paintings, some still yet to be uh, done. Uh, at this uh, conference uh, in September of, uh, of next year. So it's a very, very exciting way to, way to, uh, way to go. And uh, I know how important it is to you. Uh, do you have any final thoughts before we have to wrap well, up I, our program? I, I have a funny kind of way of thinking. The challenge of making these important paintings and succeeding at it is my own reward. And... Um, Again, I'm not worried about the state. I'm, I mean, the county of Santa Clara, the county of San Mateo, or Bank of America, you know, they're going to grab the art, you know, and have their own uh, events going on in concurrence with the state. But my reward is uh, doing something that might be of great value. Well, it is. And you are. You are a treasure, and for doing this and for taking this on, we are lucky as Californians and citizens of the world to have you, and it has been my pleasure to be able to talk with you. Thank you so, so much, my friend. I appreciate it. And thank you for taking your time, Jonathan Clyde. It is, I appreciate it. It is my pleasure. And thank you for joining us today on today's program. I hope you found it as stimulating as I did. Have a nice day.